Today, I find myself reflecting on the painful reality of racism and prejudice, particularly the way some people make fun of South Koreans because of the situation in North Korea. It's deeply troubling to witness such behavior, which not only stems from ignorance, but also perpetuates divisions and suffering. How can we as humans engage in such heartless actions when we are called to love and respect one another? To begin with, the notion that South Koreans should somehow be ridiculed because of the situation in North Korea is fundamentally flawed. South Korea and North Korea, despite sharing a history in peninsula, are two vastly different countries today. South Korea is a vibrant democratic nation that has made immense contributions to the world in technology, culture, and many other fields. North Korea, on the other hand, is an isolated and authoritarian regime. The people of South Korea are not responsible for the actions of the North Korean government and ridiculing them based on the political climate in North Korea is not only illogical but deeply unjust. More broadly, making fun of people or discriminating against them based on their nationality or race is not just a failure of understanding, it's a failure of character. Racism in any form is rooted in fear and ignorance. It seeks to divide, to dehumanize, and to elevate one group at the expense of another. But God's Word teaches us that we are all created in His image and that no one is lesser in his eyes because of where they come from or how they look. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he of every single person. Regardless of race, nationality, or background bears the image of God and deserves to be treated with respect and dignity. When we allow racism or prejudice to fester in our hearts, we stand in opposition to what Christ has called us to do love one another, as he has loved us. Jesus made this clear in John 13, 34, 35, when he said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. This love is not conditional on race, nationality, for political circumstance, it is a universal command that calls us to see the humanity and worth in every individual. It is often easy for people to hide behind humor or mockery when it comes to addressing things they don't understand. In the case of making fun of South Koreans due to North Korea, many who engage in such actions may not fully grasp the complexities of the political situation on the Korean Peninsula, nor do they likely understand the pain their words may cause. Nevertheless, ignorance is no excuse for cruelty. We are called to be peacemakers and truth bearers, and part of that responsibility means standing up to prejudice and unkindness when we encounter it. The Apostle Paul in Romans 12:18 urges us, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men, to live peaceably with others, means to seek understanding and to reject actions that cause harm or division. Racism and mockery are the antithesis of peaceful living, for they stir up anger, resentment, and hurt. When we see others engaging in racist behavior, it becomes our duty to respond with truth and compassion, encouraging others to see beyond their prejudices. Furthermore, we must remember the words of Christ in Matthew 7, 1, 2, Judge not lest ye be judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured to you again. Those who judge others based on race or nationality will one day face judgment themselves. It is not our place to make sweeping assumptions about others, especially when those assumptions are based on ignorance or malice. Ultimately, the antidote to racism and prejudice is love and education. We must foster understanding and connection between people from all walks of life. And we must actively choose to love others as Christ has loved us. This means standing against racism, whether it comes in the form of overt hostility 
or subtle mockery. It means seeing people for who they are, not where they come from or the stereotypes that others have placed upon them. In closing, it is important to reflect on 1 John 4.20, which says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? If we claim to love God, then we cannot allow hatred or prejudice to live in our hearts. We must love our brothers and sisters, no matter where they come from or what their background is. And in doing so, we live out the true command of Christ to love one another as he has loved us. So to those who engage in mocking or racist behavior, I would urge you to pause and reflect. Consider the humanity of the people you are speaking about. Remember that every person is worthy of respect, love, and dignity. And most of all, remember that we are all called to a higher standard of love one that transcends race, nationality, and prejudice. Let us strive to live in peace with one another and to reject any form of racism or hatred in our lives. In shadows cast by ignorance's hand, where hearts once warm now coldly stand, a mocking voice, a cruel sneer, turns laughter sharp and love to fear. What lies beneath that hardened gaze? A soul misguided, lost in haze, for skin, or land, or name, or race, is not what gives a man his grace. Each face, a mirror of God's light. Yet some choose hate, forsake what's right. They see the lines where none should be, blind to our shared humanity. Yet Christ commands us love, not hate to mend what's torn, to heal the weight, for every soul in God's own eyes is precious, bound by heaven's ties. So cast away the cruel divide. Let love, not fear, in hearts reside. For in the end, we will remain the bonds of peace, not fear or pain.